Hello guys, in this video we will be exploring one of my latest projects, the Killer Shrimp Aquarium. The reason for making this aquarium is that the Killer Shrimp, or Dichrogammarus Velosus, were one of the subjects of my bachelor thesis, and to study them, I had to kill them. However, I also wanted to see some of these shrimp alive and well, which is why I decided to do this project. The reason they're called killer shrimp will be discussed later. Not only did I want this to be an aquarium harboring killer shrimp, I also wanted this aquarium to be like a very small version of the location where I conducted my research, Lake Markermeer in the Netherlands. So that is what I set out to do. This is the aquarium I'll be using for the project. It's the same aquarium as the tadpole aquarium and is still very dirty. So, I'll let it soak in water for a few days before cleaning it. The sand is the only thing I won't locally source for this project because the substrate of Lake Markermeer is also just sand. Look how nice and bubbly that is. Now that it's full, I'll let it soak for a few days. This is the location where I will source all the materials for the aquarium. And this, the sand with the rocks on top, is the look I want to recreate. First, I move some rocks around, forcing the shrimp to move, while at the same time moving this little net back and forth, thereby catching the shrimp. Wow! And then I carefully grab them and put them in a little tube. So I wind up with a tube with shrimp. I also collected some small shells and stones, putting them in a container filled with water so any organisms living on the shells will make it to the aquarium safely. And of course, I collected some rocks. Naturally, as a Dutchman, I transported everything on my bike. The tank has been sitting here for a few days, but before cleaning anything, I'll add the shrimp, because I don't want to let them sit in this tube for too long. And look, I also caught a mycid shrimp, also known as opossum shrimp. Let's add them. These are the rocks I collected, and as you can see, a lot of small critters came along with them. Between the shells and pebbles, there's a small freshwater mussel. Alright, now it's time to clean. I don't know how well it will all show up on camera, but we'll see. It was a very good idea to let this soak in water for a few days, because I tried to get it off before and it was near impossible to do and now it comes right off. Well, that looks much better, right? So now it's time for the aquascaping or really just seeing if I am able to fit all the rocks that I collected in here. Um, but maybe that's actually kind of the same thing. So, let's do it. Uh. 
Um, I don't have much of a plan. I'm just gonna try to replicate um, the original location as much as possible in looks. And then we'll see how that looks and if I'm happy with it. And as you can see, or maybe see, there's actually also a lot of gomerits on the rocks present. Um, so we're gonna have many more in the tank than we had before I added the rocks. Add a few pebbles. And I think I'm gonna just dump the rest of the contents of this container inside because there's a lot of uh, small little animals, mostly gamerits in here. And look at the nice color of that water. For the finishing touch, I'm gonna add a lot of shells and also the freshwater mussels that are inside of them. And I'm going to try to position at least one of the mussels right at the front of the glass so we can keep an eye on it. This is the mussel. And uh, that's it for the aquascape. Um, I'm sure it looks great uh, as soon as it clears up. Um, and I'm not gonna do too much artistic thinking because I want it to look as natural as possible. So we'll uh, come take a look again as soon as this all clears up. Now it's just a matter of letting the particles in the water settle, but we can already see some shrimp zooming around. At night I also saw some nice muscle action. The individual you're seeing is either Drysena polymorpha or Drysena quagga, as they are the only native muscle species in Lake Markermere that look like this. When I say native, I actually mean present, as both Drysena species are invasive here. Another invasive species found in Lake Markermere is the mice shrimp I caught, more specifically Limnomyces benedaini. Here we get a glimpse at the killer shrimp, Dicrogomerus villosus. I couldn't help but feel that something was missing from this aquarium. Lake Markermere is home to a few different species of water plants and macroalgae. I wanted to add some plants to the tank and therefore set out to find one species of plant in particular, Potamogeton perfoliatus, also known as clasping leaf pondweed, perfoliate pondweed and redhead grass for some reason. The reason I wanted to find this plant in particular is because it is an important source of both habitat and food for gamerids like our killer shrimp. It turned out to be very easy to find. For our plant makeover, this is the before and this is the after. Look, the shrimp love it. So now we have a finished product. Or at least that is what one might think. An aquarium is a living product, an ecosystem comprised of living organisms and can therefore never really be finished. It keeps changing over time, finding new balances and losing them again. 
Anyway, I'm starting to get a little track here. What I meant to say is that we now have all the starting ingredients for this killer shrimp aquarium. The substrate, microorganisms, animals and plants. Let's take a closer look at the star of this show, the killer shrimp. So, killer shrimp. You've heard about them, you've seen them, you know them and you love them. But what are they exactly? Well, let's find out. Killer shrimp, or Dicrogammarus villosus, are a species of gammarid. Gammarids are a family of crustaceans in the order of Amphipoda. The killer shrimp gets its name because it is a ferocious killer in the areas where it is invasive. It just so happens to be that the killer shrimp is a very invasive species. In fact, it's on the list of the 100 most invasive exotic species of Europe. In 2011, the Environment Agency called the killer shrimp the worst non-native invader of Wales and England's waterways. The species is originally from the areas around the Black Sea and Caspian Sea, more specifically the Ponto Caspian area. Here it is just one of the many Gamera species and not a particularly ferocious killer or invasive species. It managed to spread throughout the entirety of Central and Western Europe, Sweden, England, Wales and Ireland. It spread via ballast water of ships initially but was later able to spread to most main waterways of Central and Western Europe via the main rivers. You see, it used to move freely in the Danube River, connected to the Black Sea, but not anywhere else. However, the construction of canals connecting large rivers led to an extensive Eurasian aquatic network, providing pathways to the killer shrimp to spread throughout all the large rivers in Europe. One of those rivers, the Rhine River, led it straight to Lake Markermere. This combination of shipping activities and the aquatic network also led to other species, many in fact, from the Ponto Caspian region, finding their way to Lake Markermere, including the freshwater mussels and mycet shrimp in this very aquarium, as well as another gamarid species, Dicrogammarus hemobaphis, also known as the demon shrimp, all of which are very invasive. In fact, the killer shrimp and demon shrimp, together with a North American invader, the tiger shrimp, have completely outcompeted all native gamarid species of Lake Markermere and now are the only gamarid species present in the lake. That is about as invasive as a species can get. But why is the killer shrimp so incredibly invasive? Well, there's more than just one reason. A lot of it has to do with its life history traits or life cycle processes. For instance, whereas many Gamera species breed only once or a few times per year, the killer shrimp can do so many times, being able to breed as long as water temperatures exceed 13 degrees Celsius, as opposed to only a certain part of the year for other species. Not only does it breed more often, it has a larger brood size than most species as well. Whereas most species give birth to between 10 and 20 individuals, and yes, they give birth as eggs hatch within their brood pouch, the mean brood size of the killer shrimp is over 50. On top of that, killer shrimp reach sexual maturity very quickly compared to most other species, in about 4 to 8 weeks. This results in the killer shrimp having an average 3 generations per year, as opposed to many gamarid species having only 1 or 2 generations each year. This set of life history traits causes the number of individuals of killer shrimp to increase really, really quickly, exponentially more quickly than, for instance, the native gamarid species of Lake Markermere, which now disappeared from this ecosystem. So, the killer shrimp overwhelm many native gamarid populations in sheer numbers alone. And that's not all. You see, the killer shrimp is also larger than most of the other gamarid species, and this is relevant because of its diet. Whereas many gamarid species are mostly herbivorous and detrivorous, eating mainly plants, algae and decay and organic matter, the killer shrimp eats just about anything. To be fair, Almost all gomerids are opportunistic feeders, eating whatever they can, including other living animals, but the killer shrimp excels at hunting and killing. It hunts for a wide variety of invertebrates and even small fish. 
And here's the killer, I mean kicker. This includes other grammarids, especially those smaller than itself. And what do you know? It's larger than most other grammarid species. It's even known to be cannibalistic, with adults preying on juveniles. It's a very effective predator because of its powerful jaws and because it has large spikes at the end of its first and second pair of periopods. Or, in other words, it has four quick arms with huge spikes at the ends of them. I have a few short clips in which you can hopefully see those spikes. So, we have a large shrimp that reproduces very rapidly and is an excellent hunter. We have the very invasive killer shrimp. I've added some Daphnia a couple of times, as they can be found in Lake Markermere as well, and the killer shrimp really like them. So, here's some footage of the shrimp eating Daphnia. Enjoy! So, this is the Killer Shrimp Aquarium. It's a small sample of a very interesting ecosystem quite close to me and it is a joy to watch. The shrimp are very active, especially at night, and they keep me entertained walking and swimming around and just doing their Killer Shrimp stuff. I also think they're kind of cute. And if you think that's weird, to find a ferocious predator such as this one cute, well, then you shouldn't find cats cute either. Of course, there are many more animals that make this an interesting aquarium, but I think those deserve their own video, so stay tuned for that one. That just about concludes this video about the Killer Shrimp Aquarium. I would like to thank Sam and Mike, Marike Gerritsen and Rue Elwood, as well as the 50 other patrons for their generous support. And I would like to thank you for watching. If you would like to see more videos like this one and don't want to miss the video about the other inhabitants of this aquarium and you haven't already, well, you're going to have to subscribe. Goodbye. Yeah. Horizontal. Horizontal, oh yeah. <laughs>